Over the past couple of years, a new class of ultra-hot compacts like the Volkswagen Golf R, the Ford Focus RS, and the Honda Civic Type R have dominated the attention of gearheads. It's almost easy to forget that an entirely separate segment of fun-to-drive car lives just under that top-tier class. In it is this all-new and very good Honda Civic Si. How does it look? Praise for the driving behaviors of the 10th generation Civic has been almost universal, but the world seems utterly split on its origami-inspired looks. The hard creases and interesting angles are even more prominent on this SI sedan, with the added bonus of an angular rear wing to further inspire passionate opinions. I personally kind of dig it, especially on the standard 18-inch wheels, but I'll understand if it's a bit too radical for some tastes. How's the storage? Now the bad news is that you can't buy the Civic Si as a hatchback, but the good news is that the sedan actually has a really spacious trunk relative to the class. 14.7 cubic feet mean that we can really make those suitcases dance. All of the cleverness we've loved from the standard Civic interior carries over here, including the really handy super configurable center storage bin. I'm also a big fan of the cord organizer that keeps my lightning cable exactly where I want it. Is it roomy? My only complaint from the driver's seat is that the fixed headrest ends up too low for a tall fellow like me. The back seat measures out a little bigger than average for a compact sedan too, even if I make it look cramped. How does the interior feel? Now, on the whole, I really like these cloth trim racing bucket seats, but I will say that the non-adjustable headrest is just a little bit too low for the back of my head. Otherwise, it's great in here. It's kind of a racier version of the normal Civic cabin, meaning it's really ergonomic and feels pretty well screwed together. Is it well equipped? At the moment, there are no trim options for the SI, with Honda only offering the car in one well-contented specification. Outside, you get those 18-inch wheels and LED lighting in front and in back. Inside, you'll find heated seats, a moonroof, dual climate controls, push-button start, a 10-speaker audio system, sporty pedals, and a perfect-to-hold leather-wrapped shift knob. How's the infotainment system? This is Honda's display audio system with a 7-inch touchscreen and generally inoffensive operation. It gets bonus points for clear graphics and integration of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but loses points for the slightly annoying volume controls. Is it a good daily driver? Okay, so it's important to know that one of the true beauties of the SI is that you can drive it like any other Civic. It's not one of these performance cars that screams, I'm a performance car, all the time. So any other Civic means first and foremost that you have light but accurate control. So easy to maneuver steering and a really great light action on this gear lever. The other thing that it brings to the table is really wonderful ride quality. Even on these bumpy roads, it really doesn't translate a lot of that impact through to the cabin and the NVH is very well managed. So unless I floor it and hear the engine screaming, it stays pretty quiet. Is it fun to drive? <laughs> so yeah, this car is a ton of fun to drive and this six-speed manual gearbox makes bringing every ounce of power out of the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine a joy to do. Now I know you GTI fanboys are out there looking at the spec sheet and saying this 1.5T only makes 205 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque. That is down a little bit to very relevant competition. But don't forget the car only weighs 2,900 pounds or thereabouts and the transmission is so good that the whole package comes together in a really wonderful way. 
Now, I've already talked about the ride quality and how that makes the SI such a good daily driver, but the fact of the matter is the car is really light on its feet too. Of course, it's a good handling car in the tradition of the other Civic SIs that have led up to it. When I push the sport mode button and I firm up the underpinnings, it makes it all that much better. So it's light, it's accurate to toss into the corner, and most importantly, the suspension responds really quickly to inputs, so I can change direction over and over with great speed. How's the fuel economy? You probably won't buy the SI for its MPG figures, but the fuel economy is actually one of the car's killer features. EPA ratings are 28 miles per gallon city, 38 highway, and 32 combined. That's objectively very good, and compared to rivals like the Hyundai Elantra Sport and the VW GTI, it's clearly the best in class. How much is it? Our test car is completely option free. Honda only offers a handful on this model anyways. Add the MSRP to the destination and delivery charges and you get an all-in price of $24,775. Honda has kept a laser focus on affordable performance here. Plus, those with bigger budgets can now buy a Type R. What are the negatives? The SI faces the same two main drawbacks as the car that it replaces. Number one is that it doesn't have the same performance potential, at least in terms of raw power, as cars like the Volkswagen GTI and the Ford Focus ST. Number two is that, unlike both of those vehicles, you'll never be able to buy this one as a hatchback. Who should buy it? Despite those small drawbacks, I really do believe that the Civic SI offers performance that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis and on a budget that most people can afford, and with Honda quality too. If any of those things appeal to you, you should schedule your test drive now. Thanks for tuning in to our Civic SI Why Buy guys. We appreciate you watching. Please feel free to leave us a comment or question down below. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel. We'd also love to see you, as always, on Motor1.com.